in this collection of entrepreneurial tales extracted from the first chapter of the book. 1,000 Ways to Make $1,000 We explore a range of remarkable business journeys that are not only inspiring but also laden with insightful lessons. These stories present real-life examples of how ordinary individuals navigated the unpredictable world of entrepreneurship to establish successful businesses, often starting with limited resources and capital. From the ventures of John Wanamaker and Alice Foot McDougall, who fought against adversity to create successful businesses, to Otto Schering's tale of resilience, adaptation, and innovation in the candy industry, each narrative brings a unique perspective and valuable wisdom on building a thriving venture from scratch. As you delve into these stories, you will uncover the essence of entrepreneurship, its challenges, rewards, and the sheer grit required to transform an idea into a successful enterprise. Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. How the Great Wanamaker Business Started In the thick of gloom that shrouded the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, in 1861, a 23-year-old man named John Wanamaker was preparing to make a bold move. The air was thick with foreboding as the specter of the Civil War loomed ominously and the financial depression triggered by the closure of many banks in 1857 weighed heavily on the city. However, amidst the prevailing pessimism, John Wanamaker saw a unique opportunity. Having saved $1,900, John proposed a business partnership to his brother-in-law, Nathan Brown, who had $1,600 to risk. Many voices cautioned them against starting a venture in such volatile times, but to John, any time was ripe to begin, provided one had the will to actually commence. Ignoring the well-meaning advice of his friends, he convinced Nathan, and together they took their first step into the world of entrepreneurship. In February 1861, with the lease of a store signed and $375 spent on fixtures and a further $739 on fabric, the Wanamaker and Brown store opened its doors to the public on April 8th. The first few days were uneventful, with many passers-by, but very few customers. Their initial profit of $24.67 came from the sale of gentlemen's collars, cuffs, and neckties. It wasn't a huge start, and the $3,500 they had initially pulled was fast diminishing. A feeling of uncertainty began to creep in. One day in late April, a unique opportunity arose. A nervous clothing manufacturer, fearing the war's impact on business, decided to sell his stock. Sensing a chance, Wanamaker took over the stock with a promise to pay in 30 days. With the last of his money, a mere $24, he placed advertisements in the Philadelphia newspapers. It was a desperate and risky move, one that could either save their business or hasten its downfall. As it turned out, the gamble paid off. The advertisements pulled in customers, and within two weeks, the entire stock was sold. From that point on, the business began to flourish. The partners poured every spare dollar into advertising, firmly believing in its power to attract customers. By 1869, Wanamaker and Brown had become the largest retail dealers in men's clothing in the United States. The sudden death of Nathan Brown, however, posed a new challenge. Unfazed, John Wanamaker restructured the company under the name John Wanamaker and Company to continue operations. His faith in advertising remained unwavering, and he continued to invest in it, especially during economic downturns, believing that increased visibility could only attract more business. Today, the John Wanamaker Company stands as one of the world's great stores, a testament to the faith and determination of a man who dared to venture into uncertainty and came out victorious. John Wanamaker's legacy serves as a reminder that even in the most challenging times, a steadfast belief in one's approach, combined with the courage to seize opportunities, can create an enduring legacy. How J. C. Penny made his first $1,000 In the humble town of Hamilton, Missouri, a young man named James Cash Penny embarked on a journey destined for greatness. His tale begins in the modest confinements of a local store, earning a mere $2.27 a month. However, 32 years later, Penny would emerge as the head of a grand empire, 
a success story etched in the annals of American business. Born into an average small-town family, Penny possessed an extraordinary blend of ambition and perseverance. His path to success was not a matter of mere luck but a result of his unwavering enthusiasm, clear vision, and singular purpose, all fueled by relentless hard work. After working as a clerk for T.M. Callahan's store, Penny was given the golden opportunity to become a partner in the business and manage a new store. Though his savings only amounted to $500, far short of what was needed, his partners agreed to lend him the additional amount at an interest rate of 8%. However, the young Penny's financial acumen came to the fore, and he found a bank that offered the loan at a lower interest of 6%. With a capital of $6,000, of which a third was Penny's contribution, the new store opened on April 14, 1902. It was an instant success. By the end of the first year, the store had made sales amounting to $28,891.11, earning Penny a profit well over his first $1,000. What others might have perceived as drudgery, Penny saw as the exciting challenge of building a business. He was in his element, doing the work he loved. By 1904, Penny had opened his third store. Callahan and his initial partner decided to part ways and offered to sell their interest in the three stores to Penny. Despite lacking the needed funds, Penny's reputation and drive inspired such confidence that they accepted his note for $30,000. Thus, Penny became the sole proprietor of the stores, then known as the Golden Rule Stores. Penny's innovative approach to business lay not only in selling goods but in building leaders. He nurtured his employees, preparing them to manage new stores and perpetuating a cycle of growth and leadership. This model ensured that with each new store, more capital was accumulated for further expansion, and profits were shared among the managers. Through this approach, Penny expanded his empire exponentially, each branch reflecting his ethos and entrepreneurial spirit. He wasn't merely developing a chain of stores. He was cultivating a lineage of proficient managers to handle the burgeoning business. Penny's vision materialized into a thriving enterprise, with sales eventually exceeding $250 million. His story encapsulates the quintessential American dream, starting from humble beginnings and rising to monumental success through hard work, foresight, and an unwavering belief in oneself. In the face of hurdles and limitations, Penny saw opportunities for growth and innovation, proving that success often blooms from the seeds of adversity. Mrs. MacDougall turned $38 into a million. In 1907, the bustling metropolis of New York City presented an unexpected trial to a humble widow named Alice Foote MacDougall. With three young children to provide for and the sorrow of her husband's death fresh in her heart. Alice found herself grappling with the task of preserving the family's income source a small coffee-broking business. Alice's only capital was a meager $38, and her only experience outside household duties lay in coffee blending. Despite this, she took on the challenge with determination. Battling prejudices, antagonism from competitors, and her own inexperience, she embarked on a venture into the male-dominated world of business. Her adversaries gave her six months at most, predicting her prompt failure. Yet, as time progressed, so did Alice. Her office was a simple arrangement of a borrowed desk and a second-hand chair. Her clientele consisted mainly of clubs, hospitals, and sanitariums, reached primarily through mail orders. Still, she realized she would have to broaden her horizons to make ends meet. With a firm resolve, Alice planned personal calls within a 75-mile radius from New York. For years, she crisscrossed this territory, gradually earning a name for her quality coffee. Two years into her venture, she was taking in $20,000 a year. It was not a hefty profit, considering the net profit on each pound of coffee was only about four cents. However, it was a start. Her reputation paved the way for her first coffee shop at the Grand Central Terminal. Serving her signature coffee and simple foods, she soon had 8,000 customers per month. The success of this single shop spiraled into a chain of six unique eating places, each designed after a typical European scenic spot. The public was drawn to the foreign, leisurely atmosphere Alice created, 
and her tea rooms thrived, amassing up to $1,684,000 a year. But then the Great Depression hit in 1932, and like many others, Alice's empire crumbled. All six restaurants went into receivership, and she found herself back at square one. Yet, Alice was no stranger to adversity. Now age 65, she mustered her fighting spirit once more. Refusing to let her dream die, Alice made a remarkable comeback. She opened a chain of three restaurants, with a renewed focus on the distinct atmosphere that had once drawn her customers. The public reciprocated with their approval and patronage, signaling her return to the business world. Alice Foot McDougall's story is a testament to the power of resilience and tenacity. From a modest widow to the matriarch of a thriving restaurant chain, her journey continues to inspire, proving that success is attainable for those willing to persevere through hardships and relentlessly chase their dreams. How Otto Schnering Made His First $1,000 In 1914, a 21-year-old entrepreneur named Otto Y. Schnering embarked on an uncertain business journey. With only a meager capital, Otto established himself as a manufacturer's agent in a small rented office. Battling unpredictable odds, he persevered, slowly acquiring invaluable business experience. Two years later, Otto stumbled upon what he believed to be his golden opportunity. He learned about a candy-making machine up for sale at a mere $100. Enticed by the fortunes that others had amassed in the candy industry, Otto decided to invest in the machine. Upon receiving the machine, Otto immediately delved into his new business venture. He toiled till midnight, crafting what he thought to be a superior batch of candy. The next day, he arranged for a few local shopkeepers to sell his candy on consignment. However, when he returned to these shops later, he found that his candy had hardly sold. Rather than be disheartened, Otto took it as a challenge. He was now a candy manufacturer, and he needed to figure out why his candies weren't selling. It soon dawned upon him that he had committed a common blunder. He had been creating candies that pleased his own palate instead of catering to public preferences. This realization was a turning point for Otto. He decided to shift his focus and started to create candies that the public would like. Through research, he discovered that the top-selling candies were those made of chocolate, caramel, and peanuts. Otto put his newfound knowledge into practice, but his sales still fell short of his expectations. In his pursuit of the ideal candy, Otto spent the next three years experimenting with numerous candy bar combinations. His persistence finally paid off when he struck the perfect blend of chocolate, caramel, and peanuts. He christened his creation, Baby Ruth a name that was both familiar and easily pronounceable. The five-cent candy bar was an immediate success, marking a turning point in Otto's fortunes. Otto's journey exemplifies that a successful business requires not just a good product but an understanding of the consumer's tastes. He showed that sometimes, the road to success involves a series of trials and errors, but persistence and a keen understanding of the market can yield sweet results. This story serves as a timeless lesson for anyone embarking on their entrepreneurial journey. It underscores the importance of understanding one's target market and being resilient in the face of adversity. Otto's initial failure and subsequent success with his Baby Ruth candy bar serve as a testament to this principle. His journey from a struggling businessman to a successful candy manufacturer illuminates the path for budding entrepreneurs and reminds us that sweet success often comes to those who aren't afraid to learn from their bitter failures. Overcoming Resistance The Rise of the National Cash Register In the heart of Dayton, Ohio, there was an incredible saga of American business success brewing, the story of the National Cash Register Company. This tale is a testament to the extraordinary vision and tenacity of its founder, John H. Patterson, a man who proved what a single person with an idea and a bucket load of determination could achieve. In 1884, Patterson introduced the groundbreaking invention the cash register. While its usefulness wasn't disputed, its perceived premise that an employer's staff couldn't be trusted sparked severe opposition from retail clerks. 
The prospects for the success of this new device seemed bleak at best, yet Patterson was undeterred. Despite facing significant resistance, Patterson masterfully transformed this massive barrier into a sales pitch. Cash register salesmen were trained to portray the cash register not as a symbol of distrust but as a tool for business owners to protect their employees from the temptation of dishonesty. This innovative approach addressed the issue by pointing the metaphorical finger at the business owners instead of their employees. Once this approach was adopted, the opposition slowly receded, and business began to grow. This strategy, turning objections into reasons for buying, set the tone for the company's global leadership in sales, encapsulated in the famous quote from a cash register salesman. Sell your man with the weapons he hands you. Surprisingly, Patterson was not the inventor of the cash register. His earlier career was in the coal business. However, at the age of 40, he saw the potential in the National Manufacturing Company, which held basic patents on a cash register and bought a controlling interest for $6,500. The cash register was a crude device that punched holes in appropriate columns on a strip of paper. The community derided Patterson's investment due to the apparent lack of demand for the machine. So intense was the ridicule that Patterson even tried to renege on his contract, offering a $2,000 bonus to the seller to take it back. However, when his offer was rejected, he decided to dive headfirst into the venture and make it a success. Patterson's lack of manufacturing knowledge was probably a blessing in disguise as he was unfazed by the traditional challenges associated with introducing a new product without an established demand. Undeterred by the fact that it couldn't be done, Patterson changed the company name to the National Cash Register Company in December 1884 and devoted himself entirely to cash registers. Starting from scratch, Patterson faced the daunting task. He needed to refine the unwieldy machine, identify and develop a market create effective advertising, and cultivate salesmen to sell the product. His determination and vision led to the evolution of modern salesmanship, which until then was merely order-taking. By 1888, the company began to make a name for itself. Despite economic downturns, Patterson worked tirelessly to overcome the numerous obstacles he faced. His steadfast refusal to acknowledge the prospect of failure, along with his continuous efforts to improve the product, sales strategies, and manufacturing facilities, allowed him to build a global business in Dayton that generated millions for the Patterson family. The story of John H. Patterson and the National Cash Register Company illustrates the power of determination and belief in an idea, even in the face of adversity. It serves as a reminder that with the right vision and resilience, what seems an insurmountable challenge can turn into an extraordinary success story. As we conclude these incredible entrepreneurial journeys, remember that each story holds a wealth of knowledge, resilience, and innovation that you can draw from and apply to your own ventures. We encourage you to revisit these tales often, let them resonate within you, and absorb them into your subconscious. By doing so, you're allowing these entrepreneurial values to become part of your thinking, thereby shaping your journey to success. Stay tuned for more such inspiring stories that are sure to propel your entrepreneurial spirit to new heights. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and each story you hear is a step forward in your own entrepreneurial adventure. Keep listening, keep learning, and keep growing.